Hey guys, I am out at the Bellamy Bridge Heritage Trail and I am really excited to be back out here because it's been over a year since I was able to come out here last. Uh, Mariana, Jackson County here in Florida, um, was completely ravaged by Hurricane Michael a little bit over a year ago. Uh, the trail was pretty much decimated and it has taken uh, a, a year until it's been able to reopen. It reopened a couple of weeks ago and uh, so this is the first time that I've been able to come back out here and take a look so I'm really excited to see it again. Um, like I said I haven't seen it since, since it's been cleared out again but uh, we're gonna go walk the little trail. It's not a very long hike uh, but I'm gonna give you a visual on the trail and see what all it's like and we're gonna check out Bellamy Bridge which is one of the most haunted uh, one of the most famous haunted spots in all of Florida um, so let's get a move on let's go see how how well it it's cleared out and take a look Okay, I can kind of see a trail here again. It's not exactly pretty yet, but it's serviceable. So, if you are not familiar with the story of the ghost of Bellamy Bridge, or the burning bride of Bellamy Bridge, this is a legend that has gone on for decades, for well over a hundred years. And a lot of people in during that time have seen some rather strange things out here. As the legend goes, Elizabeth Jane Croom Bellamy uh, was to marry Samuel Bellamy and it said that they had a big home out here that he had built for and that uh, on their wedding night at the reception as they danced it said that uh, as they danced in the candlelit room her gown made contact with the flame from a candle and that she was quickly engulfed in flames and that she ran out of the house and ran out to the bridge and jumped off the bridge into the water. That's the legend as it was relayed to me. Um, and that since then, people have seen what appears to be either a fire or a light moving quickly and then going off the bridge into the side of the water. Um, now my parents lived near here in the 60s and they and a lot of other teenagers they'd all come out here and everybody tell the same legend the same story and uh that was the way it was relayed to me there's certain variations on that story um some people say that she went upstairs to rest for a moment and kind of dozed off on a couch near a fireplace and the embers from the fireplace caught her gown on fire and she woke up and ran out the house um some people describe it as a, a light some people describe it as a fire um but here's the thing the legend is only partially true and what i mean by that is there was an Elizabeth Jane Croom Bellamy and a Samuel Bellamy. But, and she did die young. She died at the age of 18. But, she wasn't caught on fire. She died from fever, from most likely malaria. And, um, 
she did not die on her wedding night. As a matter of fact, they were already married before they moved down here. They moved from North Carolina, and there are uh, marriage records on file that indicate that they were already married in North Carolina before they ever came down here. As a matter of fact, they were married and had a child before they came down here. And their child, I believe his name was Alexander, he was also sick, and he passed away 18 days after Elizabeth died, both from fever, which was most likely malaria. Just going to give you a quick glimpse of the trail as we're continuing to press on. Now that being said, that does not negate the fact that people do see something strange out here. Oh, another thing that's not, not accurate either is that uh, Samuel and Elizabeth Bellamy did not live on this property, on the property where the, the bridge stands. It was uh, actually Samuel's brother, uh, Edward Bellamy, I believe, and his family lived out here. So uh, Elizabeth did not die here. They had their own home over in uh, closer to downtown Mariana. And, um, but she was buried near here. Now, from what I understand, her grave still exists. But it's on private property and kind of landlocked, so you can't really just go there and visit. But she is buried out near here. Um, it was it was an odd thing. Her sister was married to Samuel's brother, so two brothers and two sisters were married, and uh, so she was buried out here or near here. So that uh, her sister could take care of her gravesite and all that. Now, where the legend of the burning bride comes from, it's not completely fabricated, but where it got misattributed to Elizabeth Bellamy is most likely from uh, there was a writer named Carol Hintz that uh, she lived in Mariana for the last few years of her life and she wrote a story and in that story uh, was, was part, part of it was based on a true story from when Ms. Hintz lived in Columbus, Georgia where apparently there was a young lady who did die in a very similar manner at a wedding a girl named Cora and it was not Cora's wedding but she was at a wedding and uh, supposedly she went to rest upstairs and embers from the fireplace caught her clothing on fire and she fled out engulfed in flames. So somehow the two stories got combined but um, that's just a brief synopsis of what actually happened. But if you want to find out a lot more, there's a local historian named Dale Cox that has written the definitive book, The Ghost of Bellamy Bridge, that I've mentioned in other videos, that really goes into the history of the families, their property, the bridge, everything, the legends, Mr. Cox has compiled a lot of photographs and video from other people that uh, show odd phenomena out near the bridge. Um, odd lights and uh, glowing mists. Um, So you would do yourself a service if you're interested in the story to check out his book. There's a number of other stories in the book as well. And it's not just Bellamy Bridge. There's like 10 or a dozen other stories that 
go into a lot of other haunted locations that are nearby. Most of it's from Jackson County, Mariana, and the surrounding areas. And um, got some really neat stuff in there. So it's not just folklore, but it's, it's uh, actual facts and uh, with historical basis. Ooh, we're getting close now. We're getting real close. We're almost there. You can really see how much damage Hurricane Michael did out here. Now see, the last time that I came out here, there was water like a little creek, not really a creek, so it was standing water mostly, but you cross that little bridge there to get over the water, but it looks like things have changed. So we're going to go up this new part of the path, and bypass the bridge. There it is, I can see it. I don't know if it shows up yet on film, but I can see it. And there we are. There we are. It's been a little while since I've been able to see the structure in person. But it still stands. There we go. As you can see it it's um not a long hike over here it took about uh 12 or 15 minutes somewhere in there but yeah take a look at that Now this bridge is not the original bridge. This is actually the, I believe this is the fourth bridge that's ever been here. Um, this this steel, fr uh, steel frame bridge was built in 1914. There were three previous wooden bridges that stood right here. But this one's the one that has remained intact. Um, now this was still in use. Um, there was still a road that went down basically where the trail that we just came down and crossed to the other side. 
and this bridge was still in use at least in the 50s I believe I believe still in the 60s and then uh closed as the road was rerouted has been there for 105 years. Um, as I mentioned in Mr. Cox's book, there is a lot of history where this took place. And, um, This section of the river has been crossed a number of times. The book goes into the history of its use by Native Americans and during the Civil War. Now, for many years, the bridge was not accessible to the public. Um, on the other side of the river, there was a park that was built in the 1970s. And um, to my knowledge, it still stands, or at least part of it, the concrete picnic tables and awning and all that. That was built in the 70s, but at some point during the 80s, Everything was closed off and this was all private property and nobody there was no way to access the bridge. Now I can't uh, confirm or deny anything and but let's just say um, I've heard stories of uh, people trespassing their way to get out to get a glimpse of the of the bridge and um, possibly even getting chased out by the cops and miraculously not getting caught. I don't know anything about that. By the way, what's the statute of limitations for trespassing on private property? Who knows? But, um, anyway, you could not get to the bridge from the 80s up until just a few years ago. I believe, uh, 2014, I believe, 
is when they opened the Bellamy Bridge Heritage Trail, which opened it back up to the public and gave people an access to come see this historical landmark. So, um, as we were talking about the ghost of Bellamy Bridge, the first sightings of her go back ages, I believe back into the 1800s. I believe uh, Elizabeth Jane Croom Bellamy died in 1837, and within 20 or 30 years, people were already talking about sightings of a woman in white. Those were, from my understanding, the earliest sightings of anything out of the ordinary out here. Um, now, nobody, from, to my knowledge, nobody has claimed to have seen a woman in white in a very long time. What they see now are glowing lights. Um, Mr. Dale Cox, who I've mentioned, he and others have led uh, haunted tours where they come out and tell the story and the legend out here at nighttime. And there have been times where Mr. Cox was standing right about where I'm at right now, addressing a group, and all of a sudden everybody in the group starts murmuring and pulling out their phones and taking camera, taking pictures with the camera. And uh, they turn around and everybody's looking and there's, a, there's this mysterious glowing blue mist going right over the bridge. And we're talking a dozen or more people saw this, and there's a lot of pictures of it. And this happens fairly often. Uh, as for me personally, I've never actually seen anything out here. But I've been out here many, many times. But the ghost of Elizabeth Bellamy uh, is perhaps not the only thing that might be the cause of strange phenomena out here. There have been other acts of violence and murder has taken place out here. Um, there's one story that a man um, in the early 20th century, in the early 1900s, was having a major dispute with his wife and it said that uh, he loaded his daughter up on a carriage and brought her out here and decapitated his daughter and then cut his own throat with the blade of the axe. A murder-suicide that took place here. There's also another story of murder that happened here and this is, took place during the era of Prohibition. And this involved uh, three moonshiners. Now, as for the story of the moonshiners, this was in May of 1914. So this was in the last few months that the, the third wooden bridge still stood, and just a few months before this steel frame was built. Um, but there were three guys. There were two of them were, co were cousins. That was Sylvester Hart and Levi Hart and their associate Dan Smith and these three guys being moonshiners uh, Levi and Dan noticed that there was a decent quantity of moonshine that had gone missing and they both uh, believed that Sylvester had taken it to sell on his own so they came out here to Bellamy Bridge and their first idea was that they were going to go swimming and um, their idea was that they were going to swim and they were going to drown Sylvester. Well they did go swimming but I believe it was Levi, Sylvester's cousin, that couldn't go through with it. So instead they got out of the river and they set up a little camp and they had a camp into the night and uh at some point, Dan Smith shot Sylvester Hart twice in the head, killing him. So, as you can tell, there's been a lot of violence, a lot of sudden tragic death that has occurred out here. So, is it all just the ghost of Elizabeth Jane Croom Bellamy, or 
are some of the other spirits of the unrestful dead part of it as well. Who knows? But that's pretty much it for Bellamy Bridge, and I appreciate you hanging out with me and watching. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up and take some pictures, but uh, until next time, I'll catch you later.